If you hear that noise in the background, that's just my computer exporting last week's video. So it's gonna be noisy for like five more minutes. <laughs> Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Laugh at Jasmine, and this is my channel where I talk about mental health because my mind matters and I talk about it. I am doing a series where I talk about each one of the jobs that I've ever held in my life, and what went wrong with them, and how I lost them, why. I figured we'd just go ahead and start at the very beginning, because that's a good place to start. When you sing, you begin with A, B, no wait. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. That's enough performing for you guys. So, I'm 16 and I'm applying for my very first job ever, okay? I think it was actually my very first interview too. The very first interview I had. And the whole reason I got it was because the person that interviewed me recognized a person on my references because they went to my church and her daughter, I knew her daughter. I knew both her daughters, actually. But she recognized um, connections, networking, things like that. She hired me on the spot. I was 16, it's my first job ever, and it was at the movie theater. Cliche, right? How cliche is that? I worked, my very first job was when I was 16 and I was at the movie theater. So, my first job, I'm excited, but turned out to be like the worst experience anyone could ever experience when they're first starting out. Bad impressions. There were no pros to this job. No pros, except for the fact that I could see free movies. Otherwise, there are no pros. There's like a, a what's it called, a hierarchy or something? I don't know. It's like there's levels. You know, you have the staff, the staff lead, and then you have the managers and the boss. And so the staff, they're all right. They were cool. Um, I got along with most of them, I think. There was actually this other girl named Jazzy. She was the very first person that I met there. Her name was Jasmine. We both went by Jazzy. We were both just over five feet tall. I am five foot exactly. She's like maybe a half an inch taller than me. And we both have very large boobies. <laughs> she was the very first person I clicked with. And then the, the person that trained me, she was a staff lead. But she was actually really cool, and she was super pretty. Um, she's just like really small and dainty. She was just adorable. She's an adorable human being. But she was the nicest person. Out of everyone that was above staff, she was the nicest person. But then we have the rest of the staff lead. They were all bullies. They were all just complete bullies. And then there was the managers. Bullies. Just big, honcho, egoistic bullies. Toxic people. Absolutely the most toxic people to work for. And then there was a boss. And he was actually an Elvis impersonator, so that was kind of cool. For the times that I actually saw him, he, he wasn't really that uh, intimidating. Uh, he pretty much just left all the... the uh, the bossing around to uh, everyone underneath him. But he did have this one uh, impression of me that, uh, I, ha I have no words, okay? It's really hard to find words to express how disgusting this place was. We were doing a staff meeting and he, of course he's lecturing us so he did this little impression of someone sweeping, just like this. You can't even see my hands, but it was just, just like that. And so I go into his office to ask why I had been taking off the schedule. They scheduled it for seasonal, and I didn't know about it. Um, I was homeschooled, so it didn't matter to me. And I asked them, why, why did you make me seasonal? Like, I need, I need hours. I need money. Like, I can't not work. Uh, it doesn't work for me. And so he was telling me this and that, like, 
basically how awful I was. He was telling me how awful I was, and then that little impression of me, uh, uh, that impression that he did of someone sweeping was his impression of me. He says that I was slow. He said that I was too happy when I was let off. Like I was a lot happier to not, I was happier to leave than I was to be there working. I mean, who's not? Who's not? So basically they just put me as seasonal because I was an awful employee. Oh, and they also got on me for standing around and doing nothing. Okay, here's my defense. First of all, it is absolute slavery to fire someone just because they're standing around and doing nothing. Okay, that's, that's putting too much pressure on them. And like, I wasn't just standing around. I was in my head, I was thinking, okay, what needs to be done? What can I do? Yeah, I'm slow because my brain processes things slowly. I cannot comprehend a lot of things at once. I can only focus on one thing at a time. So when I'm standing here, I'm thinking, what do I need to do? Because I have already cleaned the counters like 50 times. The popcorn's popping, the popcorn's put in the bags, the popcorn's done, taken care of. There's nothing else that needs to be done. And like everyone else was on break or ushering. I was the only one in concessions at that time. And, and then of course like when I'm not the only one in concessions, there's other people doing everything else. So that's when I really gotta think, okay, what do I need to do? Because everyone else is already doing it. So where's my place in this? You could not stand still, you had to keep moving, you could not stop to think. What's funny is that there was this one time uh, when I, it was just me and this other dude there, and so we were both wiping the counters down and we were talking to each other. And so we were having this nice conversation and we we're wiping the counters down, so we we're working. And then the staff lead came in, the bitchiest one, she came in, she walked by, and without looking at us, she was like, work while you're talking. And then she looks at us and it's like, oh, well that never happens. And then it was always funny having two Jasmines because every time a staff lead would call Jasmine, we would both stop and look. And she's like, not you, you. <laughs> it was never me. Probably a good thing though. And then I was put on door stand once. Oh my, no, I was put on door stand a couple times, but oh. I'm just gonna, I'm just put, I'm just gonna put it out there. I made so many mistakes at this job. But hey, it's my first job and I was 16. What can you expect? Who can say that they have never made a mistake in their working experience? Who can say they have never made a mistake? I bet you, even like a manager that always seems prim and proper and knows everything and does everything right, I bet you that they have made a million mistakes leading up to that point where they were the, the head honcho. I promise you. And so I, there's like, we have these walkie talkies. You always have this walkie talkie. And so uh, there's always people talking over the walkie talkie and they're never talking to me. So I pretty much just ignore it. So I'm at the door stand and the usher's supposed to tell me when a theater is ready so that I can let these people in to go see their movie. Well, people were waiting and 20 minutes later they come up to me and they're like, hey, we're missing our movie, can we go in yet? And I'm like, um, I, I don't know. I, I didn't hear anyone say anything because I didn't know they were talking to me. Also, another really funny thing is that one day, um, well, I was on call. It's my first time ever being on call. And so I didn't really know what that meant. My parents told me that they call me if they need me. So I was like, okay. I'll wait for them to call me. Well, a couple hours pass by and I get a call and they say, what the f are you? You're supposed to call us. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. So apparently in their system, you are supposed to call them and ask if they need you and then they can say yes or no. No one told me that. Apparently it means different things depending on where you work. Don't even have that option. Just, just say I'm on or off, okay? Don't ask me to call in and ask if you need me because I don't want to come in. I don't want to put myself in that position to ask if you need me because I do not want to be needed. And so they, he calls me 
and he says it's a rainy day and we're slammed we need you here ASAP and so I get there and yeah it slammed crazy slammed and I'm shaking I'm having an anxiety like extreme anxiety but I go ahead and hop on a register and I start you know doing my job and uh, this one guy comes up to me. He tells me that he was a theater critic. And that theater was the worst theater that he had ever been in. But I was the one good thing about it. I don't know why. But hey, that ju I just want to shove that in your face, farmer. I'm the best thing. I'm the best thing about your theater. <laughs> so... Basically, everyone that works at the theater is a bitch, and they're toxic. It was a very bad experience for our first job because that's what shaped my idea of jobs uh, to this day. That's why I have high standards when it comes to how I'm treated. So yeah, I, I go in, ask why that I was uh, made seasonal. She offered me more hours and see how it goes. I go in to check my schedule. I, I have a lot of hours. I just felt up this pit in my stomach. I was just like, this is not right. Like, something is not right. Like, I should not, I should not come back here. So I'm like, I have shaky legs and I walk up to the office. I tell her, I quit. I hope I explained that well enough it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a very long time since I worked there. I guess that's it. I guess that's it. I feel like I didn't get it out there as well as I should have, but it's been, it's just been, it's been so long. I don't, I don't even remember a lot. This is like, I'm all just pulling this out of my brain right now. Anyways, I gotta go ahead and upload this video so you can see it last week. And then next week, I will uh, share the story of my next job. To help me never need a job again, be sure to support me by checking out my links in the description below. Uh, you can check out my photography website. You can check out my photography Facebook page. And I also have my link to my... Ch my I have my link to my Patreon in the link as well. You can also support me by hitting subscribe and liking this video. I mean, you don't have to like videos. There really isn't much to it. <laughs> Just like every other video. Watch my other videos and like them. Stay real and have a super speckly day. I have an announcement! The time has finally come. My Etsy shop is open! My Etsy shop is now I cannot. My Etsy shop is now open. It's open. Okay. It's open. Alrighty. It's open. My Etsy shop is open. My Etsy shop is open. I've done this so many times now, and every time I say it, it sounds so freaking stupid. So, anyways, my Etsy shop is open. It is called Jazzy Corn Art, and when you go visit there, you will find all of these guys. Paracords galore. I also have all of my mugs up. There's only five right now, but I am working on getting more. So yeah, that is basically it. Jazzy Corn Art at Etsy, and the link is in my my uh, my link bio, my linker buyer, my linker buyer, my linker buyer. And blah, blah, blah. they come in sizes six, which is a kid's, seven, which is more like a woman size, and eight, which is more like a man size. Of course, we are different people with different bodies and different size for us. So if you do not see your size option, you can feel free to DM me and give me your size and I will make a custom bracelet for you. You can even like request a particular color pattern if you want. Like, whatever. Etsy, go buy, support.